Amen. Good afternoon. Are you okay? Praise the Lord. I want to thank God for the two couples that were standing here. They are there for you as a testimony and accountability that you could be there. You never planned that you'll begin life so that you can do a formalization. But it happened. We will not throw stones. We will, of course, express if something like what happened to Isaiah McCrean, we will express our disappointment. But we will not bury you alive. The responsibility of the church is to get a hold of those who are sinking, restore them until they stand to the extent of coming to make a confession here. Not because it was so nice what happened, but because God's grace has been sufficient. I know that majority of us would rather have said, put them in their place. You know, put them in their place, what it means. Bring them and put them to shame. That's not our responsibility as church. You may not see things happening, but behind there they are happening so that we can encourage those who have fallen, though it is not our desire. And therefore, I want to congratulate both couples, Monica and uh, Abok. I want to congratulate Isaiah and Macrine for standing. We had uh, very tough talks at times, and especially with Isaiah and Macrine, but the Lord came through for them. It was so difficult at, at first, but finally you can see the beauty of God's presence that God is able to restore. It's a message for you, those of you that uh, things have happened and all you can do is to hide. You're not hiding from God. Come to us. This is there to tell you that we will not banish you, neither will the Lord. We'll rebuke you, but we will love you anyway, just like Jesus loved you. When he was dying on that cross, he was dying for people like us, sinners. We are saved by grace through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That was not my message. Let me ask you to help me. What is our theme for the year 2014? Our theme for the year 2014, for those who are visitors, there is, you know, there. Oh, it is only this corner. Let's say it together. You know there is power in repetition. When something is repeated, it means that uh, emphasis is being laid. Can we say it together again? Excellent. We believe that the Lord has been taking us to a destination. And by God's grace, we set out in the first four months, January to April, we looked at the foundations. And currently, we are on our second season or sub-theme, focusing on our second sub-theme, and that is the transformed believer, and that is between May and the month of August, which is now. So we are in the month of August, running the last lap, if I may say, of that particular sub-theme. Today, I want to share on something, because this whole month, except for the VBS, we are, we are talking about being in the footsteps of Jesus Christ or walking in the footsteps of Jesus Christ. The rest is to remind us that our journey of faith, our race of faith has a destination. There is something we are waiting for. And when the Lord Jesus comes and takes his church, there is a reward for those who will have run and completed the race well. This is a reminder to us. And therefore, there is a little clip that I would like us to watch before I share what... I have a heart and what the Lord laid in my heart. Uh, media team, if you can have that clip, please watch carefully because it communicates what I desire to communicate today. Let's go.
You are safe now. You must get away. The city is being punished. Keep moving, come on! Keep moving! Keep moving! Come on! Do not look back at the city of sin. Okay. Believe in God. Do not look back! Lord. turned into a pillar of salt for disobeying God. Lot and his daughters flee to the mountains, never to see Abraham again. He's coming back for his church. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 24 verse 42, Watch therefore, for you do not know the hour your Lord is coming. I want you to know, church, that Jesus Christ could come this month, or he might come next week, or he could even come... Amen. Three sceneries there. The first one was the flood. The second one was the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. And finally, the rapture. And today we are talking about the rapture. And the title of the message is Rapture, like a thief in the night. Matthew chapter 24, I want to read for us verse 36 to 44, if you may. Please, let's get to our Bibles, Matthew chapter 24, 36 to 44. Jesus will come like a thief in the night. Rapture, Matthew 24, verse 36 to 44. The Bible says, but of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but the Father alone. For the coming of the Son of Man will be just like in the days of Noah, the flood that is, for as in those days which were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, and they were marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. And they did not understand until the flood came and took them all away. So shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Then there shall be two men in the field, one will be taken and one will be left. Two women will be grinding at the meal. One will be taken and one will be left. Therefore, be on the alert for you do not know which day your Lord is coming. But be sure of this, that if the head of the house had known at what time of the night the thief was coming, he would have been on the alert and would not have allowed his house to be broken into. Verse 44, finally. For this reason, you be ready too. For the Son of Man is coming at an hour when you do not think he will. Jehovah God, as I share this message, may, may you open up our hearts to us. May we hear you speak and be ready. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Rapture, like a thief in the night. Brethren, nature has a way of teaching us great life lessons, including those related to our walk of faith. For example, Carnivorous animals, like a, like a lion, when they are hunting, they effectively make use of surprise attacks on their targets. And we have many examples of such. The victim has very little time to react in most cases. 
As human beings, we can relate that a lion attacking a zebra or a wild beast without the preparedness of the animal being attacked. We can compare that as human beings to the surprise attacks that thieves do on us. They come unannounced, without a warning. And you will quickly note that the two examples, both of them, have an element of surprise. They have an element of suddenly, suddenness. They have an element of coming on us without a warning, without telling us that they are coming. In both cases, the victim is meant to be caught unawares, to be caught unprepared to respond to their advantage. These examples are familiar to us. As God's people, we have a problem area. Even where God has spoken so clearly, using very common occurrences, very understandable to us, and yet, we either are quick to learn, not to learn. We are quick not to learn, or we are quick to fall into the tyranny of unbelief, or suffer the tyranny of unbelief. You will quickly note that when that happens, just like a thief in the night, like a lion attacking a zebra, the coming of the Lord, the Bible says, will be the same. There are times we seem like we take God's mercy for granted. That he has spoken certain things, but we seem to take those things that he has said for granted. Just like in the days of the flood, the days of Noah before the flood. Noah spoke to the people telling them, but they did not hear. They thought the old man had got nuts until the rains come, came and they were crying out, open for us, open for us. It was too late. Brethren, I want to bring to us the fact that there are clear records of God speaking to his people, outlining clearly the consequences of obedience. In the same manner also, there are records in scripture of God speaking to his people, giving them the consequences of disobedience out of or as a result of unbelief. They are all there for us. They are all written in this Bible. Consequences of obedience as a result of belief. Consequences of disobedience as a result of unbelief. And Jesus has recorded in the book of Matthew that I have read to us, 24 verse 36 to, to 44. He uses the imagery of a thief, the coming of a thief to our homes in the night. They come unannounced. They get us unprepared to tackle them. And he uses that to clearly bring out the fact that he's coming to take the church, what we commonly call the rapture, will be like, like that of a thief. It will be like the days of the flood. The flood came when people least expected. Expected, They had heard the message, but it did not click on them that God was serious in what he was saying. And this is a reminder to, a reminder to us, God is serious in what he says in his word. Rapture. The word rapture, when never mentioned by Christians, is commonly known to mean being caught up. Some will add something there and say being caught up in the air. And for the purposes of this sharing today, I want us to take that as our meaning. I know there may be some other dictionary meanings to rapture. But I want us for the sake of this sharing that we take the meaning to be being caught up. In fact, Paul writing to the church in Thessalonica uses the phrase, as he writes to them in 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 17, the Bible says, after that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Definitely, you realize that there is an element of surprise in there. It shall be a sudden event. It shall be a sudden occurrence. 
That describes what will happen when Jesus returns for his bride, the church. The term rapture, the name rapture, does not appear anywhere in the Bible. But it is an idea or it is a concept that is strongly biblical. I repeat, you may not find the name or the term rapture in the Bible, but it is a strongly biblical concept or biblical idea. As a matter of fact, there is a record of people who have gone through it in Scripture. And God is so wise in including such so that we can know for real when he talks about his second coming, it is for real. He's talking the truth and that it shall happen. The first example, and it shall suffice to mention just three, is Enoch. It is recorded in Genesis chapter 5, verse 21 to 24, and a cross reference in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 5. Let me read for us Hebrews 11, verse 5. It will bring the meaning that I want to share with us. The Bible says, by faith, Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. May I add to say physical death. Why? He could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. So Enoch went through rapture. He was just raptured. He was just caught up. The second person is Elijah. And majority of all of us know about Elijah and Elisha. As recorded in 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 1 to 12. And I want to read verse 11 for us. 2 Kings chapter 2. The Bible says, as they were walking along and talking together, suddenly, suddenly, suddenly a chariot of fire and horses of fire appeared and separated the two of them. And Elijah went up to heaven in a whirlwind. Therefore, he did not experience physical death. He was caught up, raptured. Finally, Jesus Christ. Luke 24, verse, 20, verse 49 to 53. Luke 24, verse 49 to 53. And you can cross-reference it with Acts chapter 1, verse 9 to 11. Let me read Acts 1, verse 9 for us. The Bible says, after he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. That's rapture. The Bible asserts, and especially through the writings of Apostle Paul, the Bible asserts that not all believers will experience physical death. Some will be raptured. The only thing that will happen is that those who have died will resurrect. Those who are still alive will be raptured. But a common thing will happen to both of them. Their mortal bodies will be changed to immortal bodies. And that is for both of them. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 51 says, Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep. In other words, we will not all die. Physical death. But we will all be changed. From mortal to immortal. Rapture, brethren, is a reality. Christians of all walks of life agree that rapture is real and it will surely come to pass, but they differ on when. I may not explain everything right here, but you can get this someone on our website, Sitam Facebook, and I believe our media team will give us at the end of this someone, whatever they are, they are doing on our slides, at the end they will give you those so that you can visit there. Because I don't want to dwell there I have a reason why. But they differ on when. Some believe that Jesus will come to take his church before the great tribulation. Tribulation simply means persecution, great persecution. That Jesus will come and take with him the church. Until the seven years of great persecution are over, then he comes. Which means those that believe in that tend to suggest that believers will not go through the great tribulation or go through the greater persecution. And therefore, if you have read the books Left Behind or seen the films or, or uh, 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 films, yes, 
Left Behind series, this seems to be the concept that they have borrowed from. Left Behind. But then the two category, number two category of people, they believe that the great persecution will begin. Seven years. And they derive as an interpretation of Daniel chapter 9 from verse 24. It doesn't say directly seven years, and therefore it's a matter of interpretation. To say that it shall occur in seven years, in between the seven years, say for example three and a half years, Jesus comes during the great tribulation. But finally, and that particular one, not many people support it. The bulk of people are in the first one called pre-tribulation. But the last one is post-tribulation. And the meaning is that the great persecution will come seven years to be specific. And after the seven years, Jesus comes for his church, which means the believers that are alive during that time will have to go through the great persecution. The belief is that we don't have necessarily to have the, the, the seven years. For those who believe in post-tribulation, tribulation is already happening. Persecution is already happening. Think of China. Think of those other places, communist countries, Islamic countries, some of them where believers are persecuted. So those proponents of that belief believe that persecution is already going on. It's only a matter of time and Jesus comes. Now, as I was preparing, I felt compelled and persuaded not to dwell on the arguments and the theories. I felt persuaded and compelled to rather give a focus to what all the three of them believe. And by the way, it is a huge topic. Because I believe some of you have had terms like millennium, the 1,000 years of Christ's rule. And we didn't want to go into that. I felt compelled by the Spirit not to dwell on that, but rather to dwell on one common thing that runs across all the three of them. The truth is, all of them believe, whatever the case, Jesus is coming. And that remains a common factor for all of them. And that is where I felt compelled to dwell on because arguments upon arguments will continue and we may not even agree. But what we agree is the fact that Jesus will surely come in the fullness of time. I leave the arguments to theological classes. So if you want for the sake of argument to really argue over the issues, go to a theological class. There you will enjoy all the time of arguing whether it is 1,000 years of Christ's rule, then he comes, then seven years. All those things, you will get them in a theological class. Much of it. And therefore, today, you cannot bring a theo theological class to the pulpit. What you only need to know as of now is that Jesus is coming. And he's coming for his church in the fullness of his time. Leave the arguments to the theological classes. What ought we to do? Because rapture cannot be wished away. The coming back of the Lord Jesus Christ cannot be wished away. It's a reality that we have to face. Jesus makes a hypothetical statement and adds a lesson to it for the believer, you and me. And he says in Matthew 24, verse 43 to 44, but understand this. If the owner of the house had known at what time of the night the thief was coming, he would have kept watch and would not have let his house be broken into. So, you also must be ready because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. What Jesus is stressing in verse 42 can only be summed up in two words. Be ready. Be ready for his coming. Be ready for the rapture. Be ready for his coming. Be ready. Paul reiterates on the same matter and exhorts believers when addressing the church in Thessalonica, as recorded in 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 1 to 7, the Bible says, Now, brothers, about times and dates we do not need to write to you, for you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying, Peace and safety. Destruction will come on them suddenly as labor pains on a pregnant woman and they will not escape. But you, please listen to these words, but you, but you who believers, 
You who have the Lord Jesus Christ in their hearts, but you, brethren, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness so that this day should surprise you like a thief. You are different from that zebra. You are different from that wild beast. You are different from that one attacked by thieves. At least you're forearmed. Why? Because you've been told, I will come like a thief. Your responsibility is to be ready at all times. I continue to read verse 5. But you, brothers, are not in darkness. Verse 5, you are all sons of the light and sons of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. So then, let us be like others. Let us not be like others who are asleep or dead, but let us be alert and self-controlled. Brethren, there is a state of preparedness we are expected to have. But why? Because we are forewarned. We are not like those animals that are attacked by carnivorous ones. We must live our lives ready to meet our Savior anytime. Death must remain a constant reminder that this world is not our home. We are only sojourning. We are only but on a journey. This world is not our home. And therefore, as we think about rapture, I would like to bring it to us that we need to focus on the fact that before that rapture happens, it is possible like, just like in the days of Noah, people will be marrying, people will be marrying, people will be doing all manner of things, including dying and being born. And it is possible for you to die before Jesus returns. And that tells you that you do not just stay saying, I'm really waiting for the signs of the rapture. But rather you be ready because any time you can be called home. Nobody knows the hour. Nobody knows the exact minute of departure from this world. It can happen in the twinkling of an eye. Early 1990s, I had an excellent friend of mine. He was a military officer. He was from my village. I knew him very well. We were good friends. He was an excellent preacher too. The villages in our area, majority of people had come to know the Lord God and others encouraged in Bible studies because whenever that military officer was on leave, he went around ministering to people. I believe there are people who will appear in heaven one day because that military officer lived. Well, one time, they were having an operation in the northeast of our country when there was a little bit of trouble. And the enemy's bullet caught him. He died. It was unexpected. My mother kept that information away from me because he knew the kind of love we had for each other, the kind of appreciation we had for each other. And she said, because I was in college that time, I would get affected. And I came home and I'm hearing this news. I went to his home and I stood outside their fence and I looked at the grave that held the remains of my friend. I felt the pang of death. What an enemy death is because it takes away the best. But I tell you, it took more than one month for me to recover. And I told my mom, next time, never do that again. I would have loved to be there to see my friend being buried so that I can put a finality to, it, to this. But it was one month plus for me to be able to put a finality to that. It came all of a sudden like a thief in the night. Death can come to you the same way. The second one that really hit me hard was another friend of mine called James Wahoo. James, together with Reverend Francis Omondi, some of you will know, they are the ones who, together with now the wife of Reverend Francis Omondi, who began the sheepfold ministries. Some of you know the sheepfold ministries that operate in some of these difficult areas and especially northeast and the coast of our country. And he had been sent to, to, to the coast, one area at the coast, 
not very far from Lamu. And he was ministering there. But after some bouts of malaria, if memory serves me well, he came to Nairobi to give the body a rest. And in one of those uh, Sundays, while he was in Nairobi, he happened to worship with us. That time, I was a member of Sitam Woodley. And he came to worship with us at Sitam Woodley. After the service, he came to me. There is a small guitar that I used to carry with me. And actually, it is this very one. He came to me and he said, Elias, please play for me and sing for me the song sung by Keith Green until that final day. And there at the parking, for a while feeling a little bit awkward, but anyway, I got settled to it and did it. Little did I know that that was the last time we were actually talking. We were actually conversing with my friend. We had been together in Garissa when they were beginning the Shipful Ministries. And actually, I never used to leave this little friend of mine. I have even lost the strap. I never used to leave it behind. So he remembered that I used to sing that song and others playing. And he said, please play for me. I want to relieve that moment for you. Pray for me because it's been long since I played. But I want you to get the message. She started off seeking God, but on my knees I stay. I want to be your pleasing child until that final day. My mind is full of me. That clutter and confuse, but standing firm, I will prevail and get that I'll be used. Amen. I'm asking once again.
Amen. After sharing that song with James Wahoo, we left each other. Not long after that, it was just a few months, I believe, if I remember well. A month or two. And at the house where Sheepfold Ministries used to host their missionaries when they come to Nairobi for holiday, he just collapsed, taken to the hospital, but was pronounced dead. In the twinkling of an eye, my friend was gone. If I was to be asked, I would say I don't think he had completed what he was here on earth to do. But God knew best because he was his creator and allowed him to live at that particular time. The spirit of death can strike at any time. So today is not just about the rapture, when Jesus comes back for his bride. But even death itself can strike before he comes back for his bride. Brethren, rapture shall be like that. In the twinkling of an eye, like a thief in the night, suddenly, without a warning. Jesus will not warn us beyond what he's, he's already warned us. Beyond the words that he has given us in scripture, that when you see these signs happen, know ye that the end is near. He will not tell you, now prepare, I'm coming tomorrow. I'm coming the next minute. You better prepare. But even as the rapture comes, death is also there with us. People will marry, people will die, people will be born. The worst that we can do is to live as though we are permanent in this world. And God is reminding us through this message that Jesus will come like a thief in the night. So we better be ready. We better be ready for his coming. It could happen any time. Like we saw in the clip of the church, it could happen even when in church like this. Unfortunately, brethren, if Jesus came right now, it is very possible, like what we saw in the clip, some will go and some will remain. Are you ready? Are you prepared to meet the King of Kings? At Valley Road, we used to have excellent services, but once in a while we'll be shocked. After people leave the service, some of them don't use footbridge and they walk across the road and some of them would get hit. A nurse left a Wednesday prayer meeting, went out just trying to cross Valley Road. There she was hit from a fellowship, and she passed on. I'm not saying any of you will be hit by a vehicle, but it can come suddenly. Are you ready? It's not about preparing tomorrow. It is now. If he came today, would he find faith in you? Let's all rise to our feet as we pray. And as we commit ourselves to God, will you remain faithful? Until that final day, will you remain faithful? I would like to pray with somebody today. Like James Wahoo, I believe those words, he was looking for those words. That my flesh is tired of seeking God. But I want to remain there. I want to hang on there. By faith, I know that I will prevail. But it is tough. We won't hide the truth, the reality is that at times the journey can be hard. And I would like to pray with someone here today. And you're there, you feel the same like James Wahoo, and you're just saying, Lord, help me. I want to remain faithful to you. It is tough, but I want to remain focused. I want to remain in you. You're here, you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. And you're saying, no, I don't want to be found ready. If rapture was to happen right now, then I don't want to be left. And the only way to be ready is to have Jesus in your heart and follow him.
Hallelujah. Every head bowed. As music ministers help us. Hallelujah. Oh, to Jesus I surrender. Surrender to him right now. Just come. Don't be afraid of anyone. Just come. Just come. Now ask the leadership to come. We desire to stand with you. Come. For you, please come. Please come. It is just for you that we are taking this minute. surrender ourselves to you. I want to pray for my brethren, O oh Lord, brothers and sisters, our children, our youth, O oh God. You have reminded us about your coming and that it will be suddenly. How I pray that we can be ready for you. I pray even for those in the pew, O oh God. Those that Jehovah God know from deep within them that they need you. Jehovah God, as you move ministering to your children, do not forget any of them that needs your touch this day. The world and many things around them has been a harassment to them. They have felt as though the world hates them. They have felt as though nothing works around them. They have felt like giving up once in a while. But we want to pray, Jehovah God, will you not visit with them today? That Jehovah God, they can totally be submitted to you. Oh, Lord of Lords and King of Kings, that you, if you came today, you would find faith in them. You would find them prepared. Oh, like Kid Green Sun, until that final day, the flesh may battle around with us, but we are willing to follow you and enslave our flesh to do the very things that please you, Lord. Help us and give us mastery of our own bodies. That we may not live, not by the desires of our, of our hearts and the desires of the flesh, but your desire. We bless you and we thank you, King of kings and Lord of lords. For in Jesus' name we pray and believe and all the saints say amen. Give a clap to the Lord. Amen.